Sometimes we feel utterly alone, even when surrounded by other people. That feeling leads to the thought that God and others have abandoned us. Why do you think he allows us to experience spiritually dry times as well as rich ones? I know I would love to just be feeling extremely high all the time, which I know is extremely capable of God's power to do, but he does let us experience those dry times. When you go through spiritual highs and lows, you recognize your need for Christ. Mm -hmm. Because when you have lows all the time, obviously it's gonna be hard to be optimistic about God, but like when you have highs all the time, you will also be experienced like, oh, well, my life's good. Like, why do I, I don't really need God. Like, things are perfect, right? In a spiritual, like, dry time, those are the times where he really wants us to see if, you know, are you going to rely on me? Are you going to fall back on me, even though you don't feel me there? You know what I'm saying? Like, he's saying I'm always there. Yeah, there's no such thing as like being on the high the entire time. The way we grow is those highs and lows, those really dry times. If we can really depend on him, that's when next time we go through highs and lows, we'll be more higher because we were able to dig deep in those dry times. Have you ever felt abandoned by a person or God? I kind of like I felt like a weird like void in my life since I was like seven, mm -hmm. since after my dad died, and like it's trying to like I'm trying to fill that void with like, anything and everything. I've never had anything extremely major happen in my life to where I feel abandoned. Uh, I know Duke's been through a lot, and it just shows in his character how strong he's gotten. Losing my grandma was probably the hardest thing family-wise that I've had. I still didn't feel abandoned. It was just more of a sadness, but also a comfort, knowing that the way she had changed over the past few years with her dementia and with her Alzheimer's and not being able to communicate was finally done, and she could finally be the grandma that I remembered. I've never really felt abandoned or like I was like left alone. I've always been a believer of like no matter what I'm going through, I always know God is there. I'll be lying if I say there's been there hasn't been times where I'm like, why do you have me here right now? Like I trust in you that that you have me here, but I don't understand why. If you take a hundred steps back, you see why you're put into these situations, but at the same time, it's still like, why am I here? Not necessarily fulfilling where I think I could be right now. God will never abandon us. Because of Jesus, we are seen blameless and perfect and pure in God's eyes, as long as we have Jesus in our life. Fully in unison with God, communicating with Him, having a relationship with Him, that's exactly how we are now because of Jesus. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. You just well, do sense. you, I'ma do me, I'ma do Sorry, me. <laughs> Good morning, Minnetonka Orchards. Do you still have um, pumpkins available in your patch? We do. Okay. Um, they got the pumpkins. They got the pumpkins. They got the uh, pumpkins. Got the pumpkins. I really couldn't believe it myself when I walked outside. At first, I kind of just looked at it, closed my eyes, opened my eyes again to make sure that I wasn't tripping. Still didn't believe it. Went into PT, got out, drove back home, and I still couldn't believe it, and I thought I was just dreaming that I had to come to the conclusion that we had our first snowfall in Minnesota. This is the real Minnesota that I know. It snows and it's cold. All the leaves falling, all the beautiful weather, all that stuff doesn't matter because the majority of the time of the year, it's always snowing and it's cold. So are we really gonna do this pumpkin patch thing even though it's cold outside? Yeah, we are. We're gonna take our pumpkin to the pumpkin patch. Wanna go to the pumpkin patch? Yeah. Yeah, mama. She's saying no. We've got a special dude with us today. Mr. Sam McKins and baby. We're here to do some more fall activities, but it's really cold. I hate the cold. I know I live in Minnesota, but this is the beginning of a long time.
So I'm having this real bad thing about Minnesota. Couldn't pick apples last weekend. We can't go to the pumpkin patch and we're at the pumpkin patch. And they have like five pumpkins here that we can see. How do you feel about all this? Well, my nipple's out, so. But we came too late. It's already two days before Halloween. So now all the pumpkins are gone. And we went too late to the apple orchard, so all the apples were gone. So it's our fault. It's our fault. Are you just swinging? Are you just swinging? Are you enjoying life? So since the pumpkin patch decided to kill our vibe, we went to the local grocery store and got our own pumpkins to carve. I've never carved a pumpkin in my entire life. I'm not really a big what? Halloween. Yeah, I've never, really, I've never carved a pumpkin. What? Yeah, I haven't. We don't do that back where I'm from. We go get candy. That's all we do, go get that candy, you know what I'm saying? I'm not really a big Halloween kind of guy. I'm more of a Christmas, Jingle Bells, everywhere, Santa Claus. I've gotten Cedric in the five Halloweens we've celebrated together, I've gotten him to dress up twice. That was probably one of the most embarrassing nights of my entire You're college. Who came up with it. Because I thought it would be cool, but it wasn't as cool as I thought and I got made fun of. My teammates made fun of me so much, it's not even funny. Yeah, we're about to get ready and uh... Get this working. We should start small because it's pretty messy. Oh. So you cut a circle. Oh. Sorry. 